Welcome to our Sunday service this morning on the second Sunday after Trinity. Uh, yesterday was the first Sunday, the first day of summer, which it probably doesn't feel like here in Cumbria. I don't know where you're watching this service from, but out on the west coast of Cumbria, it's, it's wet and blustery and windy and a little bit grim. It doesn't feel like some of the amazing weather we've been enjoying over recent weeks. But it's Sunday and so we gather together to worship God. For those of you who are joining us maybe for the first time, just want to introduce myself and Reverend Nikki Pennington. And I am a priest here on the west coast of Cumbria. I serve four churches that make up the parish of Cross Laken. And each Sunday at 10.30 on Facebook Live, we gather together to um, share in an act of Sunday worship. And usually I have some members of my family with me who have been with me during lockdown. So this is my daughter, Min, uh, my husband, Graham, and Joel, my son, at the end. Each week I send out an email that gives you the um, service order uh, so that you can take part in the Sunday service and it has things like the liturgy, the Bible readings and the hymn words on it. Um, if you're watching this and you haven't got that service order and would like to, to have that on a weekly basis then please just do message me at the end of the service and I will be in touch with you to make sure that you get that service order each week. Looking ahead uh, at the week coming, we're starting our morning prayer, our weekly morning prayer, this coming Tuesday at 8.30. And we're going to be using an online platform called Zoom. Zoom enables us to see one another as well as hear one another. Um, and it's it's fairly straightforward um, piece of software to use if you've got a, a smartphone or a tablet or a computer or laptop you can download it uh, as an app if it's on a smartphone or as a program on your computer um, and all you do need to do is when I send you the weekly email there'll be a link and when it comes to the time of the service you just need to click on that link and it will take you through to the zoom meeting but Zoom is great because I've just discovered that you don't actually need to have it um, on a, a, an internet device. You can actually phone in on a landline. So for those of you who would like to join from a landline, there'll be a telephone number in the weekly email. Along with the telephone number, there'll be another couple of numbers, the uh, meeting identity number and the password. And you use the, the phone number as you would any number, any phone number. And then when you get through, you'll be asked to press in uh, the identity number followed by a hashtag and then the password number again followed by a hashtag. And then you'll be able to hear everybody on that Zoom call. You won't be able to see us, but you will be able to take part. You'll be able to hear and be able to speak. So um, please do get the word out about that to those you know um, who may be interested in joining us for our weekly morning prayer. And it will last for about half an hour, but there's an option at the end for folks to just stay online and chat and, and just reconnect with people. Looking a little bit further ahead, on Thursday the 2nd of July is the first session um, of uh, six sessions where we're going to be exploring contemplative meditation, a form of an ancient form of Christian prayer. We're going to find out a little bit more about what it is like, why we do it, how it can help and nurture us in our, in our life of faith. And if you'd like to join in, again, just let me know, message me at the end of the service and I'll send you the link so that you can join those Zoom sessions. They'll also be on Zoom. So lots of notices this week. Let's just take a moment of quiet as we become aware of God's presence with us this day. If you have a candle at home, it's time to light it, but Graham is going to light our candle as a reminder of God's presence with us. This week, our readings from scripture remind us that God cares for us completely and calls for our total commitment in response to his unconditional love. 
Christ gave his life that we might live and calls us to give our lives to him. So come, let us worship God and we begin our service saying together our opening prayer. Rabbi Jesus, teacher of life's lessons, to we who are but life students, gather us to sit at your feet and learn from you today. You are the one who holds the words of eternal life, the one who feeds and heals, forgives and loves, even when we do and say unlovable things. We come to worship you with our songs and words and prayers. May what we offer be an uplifting to you, who observes our acts of worship, and uplifting to us as we seek your grace and mercy and peace. Amen. Amen. So our first hymn reminds us of God's faithful care and presence throughout our lives, even in these challenging times. We're going to sing Lord of the Years. <laughs>
we bring our confession, knowing that we will be forgiven. We have failed to promote the gospel as often and as fully as we should. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We have been too lazy or timid to take up the opportunities which have been given to us to pass on God's teaching. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We have made our own comfort and convenience a priority and taken no account of the needs of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. God who loves us does not abandon or forsake us. Our Saviour hears and answers when we cry out from the desolate places and times in our lives from those incidents of failure and forgetfulness. May God renew you, Christ forgive you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. And the prayer for the day. God of the covenant, your compassion reaches beyond the mere making and keeping of promises. Teach us to listen to one another with your heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the prayer for illumination. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us, for God's word and wisdom in us, thanks be to God. This week's Gospel reading concerns some of the challenges of following God in Christ. Listen out for how the reading might encourage us when we face challenges resulting from our discipleship. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 10. Jesus sends out the Twelve with a clear message to all who would listen. This message would be unpopular, but the disciples were not to be afraid of delivering it. Disciples aren't greater than their teacher and slaves aren't greater than their master. It's enough for disciples to be like their teacher and slaves like their master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, it's certain that they will call the members of his household by even worse names. Therefore, do not be afraid of those people because nothing is hidden that won't be revealed and nothing secret that won't be brought out in the open. What I say to you in the darkness, tell in the light and what you hear whispered, announce from the rooftops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't kill the soul. Instead, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin? But not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are more worthy than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before people, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But everyone who denies me before people, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Don't think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I haven't come to bring peace but a sword. I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. People's enemies are members of their own households. Those who love father or mother more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who love son or daughter more, more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who don't pick up their crosses and follow me aren't worthy of me. Those who find their lives will, will lose them and those who lose their lives because of me will find them. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And Mim now is going to come and give us our reflection for the day. Do not be afraid. It's a message which repeats itself in this Gospel reading today and one that appears in the Bible 365 times. Do not be afraid. As Christians, we are told to leave our fear behind, yet the vast majority of us all have our own fears, some trivial, some more deeply rooted. Like my mum, I have a fear of snakes and all things wriggly. But when I read this passage today, it struck a chord with a more deeply rooted fear. To be completely honest, as a young person of faith in an increasingly secular society, I am sometimes fearful to share the news of the gospel. I worry about what people may think of me. I am scared my peers may laugh at me or ridicule me. And the fear of rejection is very much real. Growing up as a person of faith, it was not uncommon to be subject to stereotypes and I began to find conversations about Christianity nerve-wracking and uncomfortable. My own fear taught me that it was sometimes better to avoid the topic altogether. In the reading today, in verse 28, Jesus reminds us that he came down from heaven to help, heal, love and embrace people, but was met by many with ridicule, anger and aggression. He reminds us that as his disciples, we should not expect to be free from this ourselves. And in today's society, this message is all too topical. When I sit and watch the news stories of huge racial injustices, global pandemics and corrupt politics, I am all too aware that me proclaiming the good news of the gospel may not be met with happy acceptance. It's a fine balance between identifying and acknowledging seriously people's suffering whilst fulfilling my role as a disciple of Christ and sharing the message in the Bible. And unfortunately, this is a balance which time and time again, I am so fearful of getting wrong that I just don't say anything at all. Fear of rejection, of saying the wrong thing, of upsetting people is so consuming that I am often guilty of being a rather passive Christian. So when I read the gospel's instruction to announce the words of the good news from the rooftops, I have an uneasy feeling in my stomach. This is not something which I can testify to doing, neither literally nor metaphorically. And on a deep level, this provides a real challenge to me. It's a challenge perhaps heightened by the fact that in today's reading, Matthew writing several years after Jesus' death and resurrection, is well aware that his words will be read by Christian communities who were experiencing persecution for following Jesus. When we are told to be not afraid of those who can kill the body, but not the soul, this is because at the time in which Jesus and his disciples preached, being killed for one's faith was a serious threat. Witness the treatment that Jesus received at the hands of the Roman Empire. And although it is not the case in our society today, there remain places in the world where Christians are still persecuted for speaking out about their faith. And as a church in a privileged place where we don't encounter this danger, I'm not sure we are taking this as seriously as we should. So after reading this, I am reminded of the people who have done and continue to speak out about their faith in life-threatening situations and I am met with a calling to speak more openly, honestly and positively about the gospel to those around me. And whilst this remains a real challenge, at the heart of the gospel message here, there is a message of real hope and comfort. 
For there is something profoundly reassuring when Jesus tells us that the real reason to not be afraid is not because you are simply telling the truth, but it is because you are loved. It is because God knows every single hair on your head and every single fear and concern and bad thought you've ever had and still loves you. When Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who can kill you, but can't kill your soul, it feels as though he is reminding us of the superficial nature of social judgment and ridicule. It is easy to get caught up in thinking about what people think of you. It is easy to hide what you really believe in, in a bid to fit in, and it is easy to be a passive Christian observing from the sidelines. After reading the Gospel today, I find myself weighing up the extent to which I pride a good social reputation over and above my Christian faith. And whilst this is personal to me, I wonder what things in your life sometimes stop you from being a witness to the Gospel. Maybe you'd like to join me in this prayer. God of uncovered secrets, God of fearless truth. To have faith in your goodness is to trust that after all we would hide is revealed and all of our whispers are heard and your undying love will remain and your truth will stand unchanged. May we forgo our protection of self and find life made whole in Shalom. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. So let's just take a moment to take in those thoughts that Lynn has shared with us this morning. So we are invited to make a response by affirming our faith. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Today is also Father's Day, and on this Sunday we take a particular theme in our prayers. We're going to be reflecting on being fathered, on fathering and the role of fathers in our community. And that will form a focus for our intercessions, which will be led by Joel, Min and Greg. We pray for fathers who struggle to balance the demands of work, marriage and children with wisdom, joy and love. We pray for children who struggle to live up to the high standards their fathers set them. We pray for fathers who never had a good role model for a father, but are working hard to be one for their children. We pray for children who have no good role model as father today. We pray for fathers who are not always there for their children, but who seek to offer their grown-up children and grandchildren their support and love. We pray for children who have difficulty in relating to their fathers in adulthood because of a change in their relationship or a reluctance to change. We pray for fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children as they grow up, whatever the cause. We pray for children who have been scarred in body, mind and spirit by their fathers. We pray for fathers who, despite divorce, have remained in their children's lives. We pray for children who cannot understand 
or who blame themselves for their parents' divorce. We pray for fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. We pray for children awaiting adoption or who were never adopted, producing a double sense of rejection. We pray for fathers who choose to take on the role of stepfathers, seeking to earn their stepchildren's love and respect. We pray for children who are not sure of the identity of their father. We pray for fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child in their heart. We pray for children who continue to mourn the loss of their fathers, whatever their age, whether they knew them or not. We pray for men who have no children, but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. We pray for children who have been abused by men to whom they were entrusted. We pray for men who have fathered us in their role as mentor and guides. We pray for children entrust entrusted to us within this church and community. We pray for men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. We pray for women who have had to be both mother and father to their children. We pray for fathers, mothers, children, our fathers, mothers, children. We pray for families of all shapes and sizes, strengthen them all, all, so that all within them might be strengthened. Merciful Father, Father accept these, these prayers for the sake, sake of our Son, our, son, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And in a time of silence, let us just remember those whose needs lie heavy on our heart this day. We remember too those we loved who have passed from this life. And we remember those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, in who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On this day we hold in our hearts all those who lost their lives yesterday. Those who were injured in last night's knife attacks in Reading and the shooting in Manchester. We think too of those who witnessed those events, of the family and friends of those who have been injured <coughs> and killed, the emergency services who sought to offer support, aid and protection to those in need. Loving God into our shock, grief and sorrow, breathe stillness. Heal those in pain and distress, comfort those who mourn. We raise our hearts and voices to you in lament and in faith. Draw us from sadness to hope that we and all those for whom we have prayed and thought of may be made whole, healed and transformed by your love. Amen. Our second hymn may not be known to you. It's a modern hymn that explores what it means to take up our crosses. So I invite you to listen to the music and the words and make it a prayer. And hopefully as we get more familiar with the hymn in future weeks and months, we'll be able to join in with it. 
So this hymn is called Beneath the Cross of Jesus. <laughs> to be the servants that God wishes us to be. It is in God that we find real life, hope and peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So as we have been doing in previous weeks, we're going to take a pause and we're going to listen to a song that's based on that passage from John where Jesus promises the peace that the world cannot give. And as we listen, I invite you to write your greetings of peace to one another in the comments below the, um, the film.
the God of all mercy, who answers the cries of the helpless and raises you from death, keep you safe in Christ Jesus, now and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Gathered and scattered, God, God is, is with us. us. In suffering and hope, God, God is, is with us. us. Now and always, God, God is, is with us. us. Thank you for joining us in our morning's worship. Please don't forget that we will be meeting on our Zoom platform on Tuesday 8.30 this week for morning prayer. I look forward to seeing you as well as hearing you at, uh, on that particular day. And um, for those of you who aren't able to join us, I look forward to um, joining with you in worship next Sunday. Again, same time, 10.30 on Facebook Live. Have a blessed week.